Uh, and our biggest project has been a steam tank kids in the called the Ikala. Uh, I've been playing and writing music for about 25 years. Uh, I guess I've been doing it for money for about 15, and I've been in the Scala City since 24. Uh, my role is to take care of every aspect of the sound design the projects we make. Um, I'm producing music, uh, the sound effects, uh, I ramble voice actors, and I implement audio in the game engine, and I write most of the code that controls audio. So I'm obviously very much into game audio, but I also love the story of the games, uh, the way that the narratives unfold, the worlds they take place in, and the way that uh, game mechanics interact with those elements. I try to approach my work from the perspective of a game designer and a storyteller, but using audio as my storytelling medium. Uh, and this approach is what I want to talk to you about today. So I'll frame the discussion like this. Um, if you care about the <coughs> stories in your games, uh, whether they're literal narratives or the stories the players are telling themselves through the play, sounds are tool that may help you to tell those tales well. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the storytelling qualities of music and how to enrich story arcs. I'm going to talk about environmental storytelling through sound, and I'm going to talk about the audio mix and how it helps us to create focal tones. Uh, and rather than try to provide comprehensive answers, I'm, I'm going to give examples and ask big questions to open these things up and hopefully to encourage you to look at answers for yourself. Uh, my hope is that an amongst system might be something that helps you to solve a problem, uh, or stands out as an approach that could fit the game story that you're trying to tell, or that gives you a much cooler idea than what I can come up with. So let's talk about music storytelling qualities. Now, music style or choice sets the scene by immediately giving the player an impression of what the story is about. Um, it can be dead simple, it could be that everything's always been happy, uh, or that something bad's about to happen. It could be that this place you're in is, say, vaguely Middle Eastern, or that it's the olden days, um, so on and so forth. But all of this contributes to our sense of setting, time, and place, the mood, and perhaps what the player can expect to experience when they're here, uh, and to interact with it. Um, there's far too much to elaborate on here, but the key point is that getting the musical style right is important, and can completely dictate the feel of your game. So my question is, is there an obvious, strong musical style for your game, or is there a less obvious alternative style uh, that could tell the story better? What impression will the music immediately give the player? Now, composers often write themes or motifs, musical signatures, I guess, uh, associated with characters, or groups of people, or places, and then they reuse and redevelop these themes in a musical version of storytelling. Uh, the type of thing I'm talking about could be a melody, but it could also be a rhythm or a specific instrument. Um, or a style. This isn't just part of the art of good composition, so I won't go into much detail here, but it's perhaps good to be generally aware of how musical themes can be used to reinforce or enrich your story arts. And to ask the question, what elements in your story might best be enhanced or tied together by strong musical themes? Now in our game, the Etherlight, um, most of the music changes based on location, but the actual melodies are themed around the characters in these locations as this was a more important thread to reinforce as the story progresses. Um, I'm going to place you a quick mashup of every occurrence of one particular character's thing. His name is Alexander. He starts off as something of a, of a bumbling fool, uh, and then one day he has to sort of step up and breathe, be brave. It doesn't go so well, but then he ends up on top and he looks at the end <coughs> See if you can follow the story arc as this theme is developed. <laughs> Themes, you can imagine the sort of story arc that this character is stepping through. Now, something we're probably all aware of is that music plays a huge part in creating an emotional experience for players. Uh, when it comes to storytelling, emotional engagement with the story is naturally desirable. Uh, and simply put, music tells the player how to feel. So, the sad parts in the game To the Moon 
Uh, they wouldn't make everyone cry, which they do, without its sweet melancholy soundtrack on the piano. Uh, an epic cinematic cutscene in, say, Mass Effect um, probably isn't going to feel epic and cinematic without an epic cinematic score along with it. That's simply what our ears have been taught to expect. Uh, even in, say, Doom, when I'm tearing a demon's arm off and beating it to death with it, my heart probably just wouldn't be in it without a super aggressive metal accompaniment. So, question What type of music will emotionally draw the player into each moment of your story? How might this change in time to take them on an emotional journey? Now, there are a ton of different musical elements that go into music's emotional quality. Uh, instrumentation and orchestration, themes, tempo and time signature. If you're working with a composer, this is kind of their problem, but some basic understanding of which elements instill which feelings is obviously a helpful vocabulary to have. So can you identify some key musical elements which might suit the type of emotional journey you want to give your players? Okay, I want to talk a bit about um, how adaptive music and rich story art uh, are the implementation side of things. So music has a lot in common with story and its structure and the way it's seems to develop. However, the non-linearity of most games creates additional challenges, uh, just as it does with narrative. Basically, players will do different stuff at different times, so we can't use a single linear soundtrack. The way the music is actually implemented in the game can determine its effectiveness in taking the player on a journey or through a story arc. So first of all, what is the story arc? Across the game, or this act of the game, the level you're in this very moment, what journey is the player being taken on? The most basic way to deal with non-linearity in music is to loop pieces of music so they play around and around, uh, and these changes, sorry, until a change, and then these changes will combine to make up the overall story arc. Um, here are just some examples of where you might use music change cues. If you're moving through different areas, for example, just rooms in an adventure game, or inside-outside transitions in an RPG, um, music can change then, and this creates a journey. Uh, specific player actions can cue music changes if you, you're using an item or interacting with an NPC, and this creates a story arc in response to the player's choices. Uh, changes in the game state can also change the music. Uh, for example, when you enter combat, or you toggle stealth mode, uh, or when a dungeon goes from being hostile to being clear. Uh, this creates a story arc in the player's mind as their context is changing. And also game progress can change music. For example, how far you are for a level, how much time there is left, uh, how well you're competing, how much of a puzzle you've solved. This forms a really clear story arc, usually through building intensity throughout towards a climax. So what types of cue are most important in telling your game story? And how could musical transitions working around these cues help? How will the cues combine to form a story arc? Um, one thing I've noticed uh, a few times lately are cues which intelligently anticipate story moments rather than waiting for them. I recently I was playing the game Inside and I was working through uh, one of the game's larger puzzles and I just worked out how I was going to complete it. When the music changed, um, as though I was sort of anticipating my technique success which I thought was really cool. Now while of course the game was just tracking the logic of how far through the puzzle I was and probably saw that I was now moving in the right direction to complete it, uh, it sort of felt like magic in the moment. And it had a wonderful effect both for the narrative and for the player experience story because the game's basically telling me how clever I am. Uh, so simple question here, can a music cue anticipate story moments? All right. Now, music can also simply be written in a way which feels like it's changing instead step of the story even, even without cues. When exploring Skyrim, for instance, the music constantly rises and falls um, to make it feel like it's reacting to your fate, and in reality it isn't. Um, this can be surprisingly effective, for example, if the music just happens to soar when I reach the summit of a mountain. Even though it didn't happen a whole bunch of other times, it, it tends to be the ones when it does that you notice. A completely different approach to music, um, which can give much more flexibility and sophistication in its depth into a story arc, is called vertical layering. Uh, and a simple way of explaining this is, imagine you take a music loop and divide it into layers, uh, perhaps the separate instruments, um, and then you could play different combinations of these layers over each other to give them a different feel and a different texture. And you can also bring layers in and out seamlessly at any time to give you a lot of musical variation to use to tell your story. Um, I've used a very really simple version of this approach in the project I'm currently working on. What I'm about to play is five different music tracks or layers uh, which I'm going to switch between seamlessly at different points. Uh, in, the, in the context of the actual game, these changes would happen when the player completes certain tasks, uh, with a result that sounds like a single piece of music which gradually builds up in time with the player's progress as layers are added. Have a listen.
Okay, hopefully you sort of um, can hear what's going on. Now, now the approach can be pretty subtle, but it's sort of the whole point. Um, as a final context example, the game Red Dead Redemption famously uses a couple of serious constraints that all of the music is in the same tempo and the same key to allow the use of vertical layering everywhere in its open world. Uh, basically what this means is that any musical layer is compatible with any other musical layer, in theory, so the music can follow whatever the player chooses to do. If they're having a really peaceful moment and then suddenly they pull out the gun and shoot from the face, uh, the music can respond to that instantly and seamlessly as well. So let's put all of these details about music implementation together into a question. What alternative ways of implementing music can help you inform your game's story uh, better? Okay, moving on from music, I want to talk about sound as an environmental storytelling. Now, environments are the worlds that our stories take place in. They give context to the story, of course, but they can also enrich or flesh out its details and make the player feel like they're discovering it for themselves. In some cases, the environment might even do the bulk of the storytelling in games like Inside that I mentioned, or Abzoot, where the stories gleam not from a true narrative, but from the player's journey through the environment and the interaction with it. Sound has a critically important role in immersing the player in the environment. More than almost anything, sound makes it feel real. Um, here are some examples from our game, The Etherlight, of how simple use of sound can begin to give setting and context to the story. In snow levels, howling wind makes it feel cold. In an alleyway in town, um, chirping critics, crickets and the crickets. crickets and the occasional distant dog bark make the place feel deserted. On a ramshackle floating town, the incessant wooden creaking feels like it could fall apart at any moment. And this might make the player wonder about the town's story and how it got so run down. Or when you step into a cave, the huge reverb effect on your footsteps immediately tells you exactly where you are. So is environmental sound reinforcing or enriching or expanding on the tales that you're telling? Now, environmental sound can tell stories in a more direct way too. In the Etherlight, we put a lot of energy into trying to get the feel of the first town right. Uh, no one wants a whole bunch of exposition about the location, so the story of the town and the player's role there had to be pretty clear as soon as they arrived, um, simply by using the environment to tell a story. Uh, the story wasn't dead simple though, we could sort of have to convey that this was once a thriving town that had fallen on hard times, that it was being oppressed by enemies, but it couldn't be too dangerous. Uh, it had to be dreary, but it also had to have some charm and character and so on. One solution that we came up with which really transformed the feel of the place was adding recorded propaganda which was piped out of the bad guys' propaganda cards, which were already existing assets in the game. Um, this is a trope that we come across in other games, like Half-Life or Dishonored or Far Away. So it was nothing new, but the idea went a long way. It felt oppressive. Uh, it gave the town some life while simultaneously making it feel even more empty of people. Uh, it had a sort of dark humour which contributed to the character of the place. Uh, and it even had the bonus of being able to give some expositional information about some locations and events in the game. So can environmental sound tell a story in your game that other elements can't? <laughs> now, um, terrain-based footsteps deserve a special mention as they can go a long way toward placing a player in an environment and making them feel like they're interacting with it and journeying through it. They give it a substance beyond just a surface texture. In the ether like the terrain tech didn't really have any useful properties of any footstep switching, so I've had to do a fair bunch of painstaking work drawing colliders by hand, but I think it's all worth it. So how can movement sounds, like footsteps, connect the player more strongly to the environment and its story? Like music, environmental sounds are much more immersive when they're implemented effectively. Uh, in fact, I tend to think that this can be even more important than the quality of the sounds themselves. A badly implemented sound says, hello, I'm a sound effect, whereas a well-implemented environment uh, brings the player into a world. The most basic elements include positioning, where the player's ears are telling them the sound is located, uh, volume and how volume changes over distance, and I'd say reverb, which is an effect that imitates the way sounds bounce around in an environment, and, and it is actually really important. Um, often when working on the etherlight, I felt like it's worth doing a little bit of extra work on implementation to allow the environmental sounds to do their job in storytelling. Um, one small example was the sound of a river that winds around the borders of one of the levels. Uh, and it's an important story feature because the fact that this icy level is melting is a key story point. I couldn't position the sound at a single spot because the river goes all over the place. Um, and having a whole bunch of sounds along the river would have been potentially expensive and tricky to implement. 
So I set up a sound source to smoothly follow the player's movement along a spline of the river and always feel like it was in around right about the right spot. Uh, I also wanted the river to change as you approached it, so I layered two sounds, a distant river roar that would draw you to it, uh, with a very gradual volume roll off, and then a more intricate icy sound, which became more prominent and close. This stuff is pretty simple, but modern audio engines are modern far more complex sound behaviors, such as spatialization or um, occlusion. And for some time, these techniques have only really been used in big budget AAA games. But I mention them because it feels like they're going to become much more normal now, especially with all the money that's being thrown at AR and VR. Um, this has the potential to massively increase the immersive realism of environmental sound, which will make it even better storytelling. Could adding complexity or polish to the way the user experiences sounds help to tell a stronger environmental story? Okay, lastly, I'm going to talk about focusing on the audio mix. The mix is important because it tells the storyteller, um, it's how the storyteller can choose what sounds they want the players and ones to focus on. By mix, I mean the relative audibility of each sound and how these will combine. Um, this de desired focus might change in time, so the mix needs to adapt smartly. As a simple example, just this week I've been working on mixing a game scene where a huge portal wormhole thing spawns right next to the player with a great big ripping sound and then a loop plays. Uh, I wanted the loop to sound really big and have heaps of energy. Um, to help the portal have this huge presence in the scene because it's an important story point. But then other things start happening. Someone comes through and starts talking to you, um, and the portal should still feel like it's there, but it's no longer the most important thing. So I thought about redesigning the actual sound, but then I tried something so simple I didn't imagine it would work. I just turned it down over time in volume. So after the portal spawns, it's a full volume for a few seconds, and then perhaps over 40 seconds, it gradually decreases to, I think, 40% of its original volume. This had the desired effect of moving your attention elsewhere, but still retaining the portal's presence, and it wasn't generally noticeable. So who or what is the story about at this moment? Uh, what sounds should you notice the most? What absence of sound should you notice, and how might these focal points change over time? Um, one thing I should point out is there's nothing wrong with quiet, and removing music in particular from the mix can be very effective in storytelling too. Sometimes this can allow the player to focus on the stories told by other game elements. Um, in Journey, the incredible intro music completely sets the feel of the game. And then it stops, and the player is temporarily left with only the sounds of wind and their footsteps in the sand. And it feels um, desolate, but full of potential. And they begin to explore their surroundings. And then, as they crest the um, summit of the first hill, the music then starts up again and continues to tell the story. Um, other games use complete, um, completely removed music, uh, or they use breaks in music to deliberately create tension or discomfort. If it's too quiet, the player's imagination can run even wilder. So could use of quiet allow other elements of your game to tell the story better? I'm just going to make one brief point on voice and dialogue, which are obviously an important use of sound to tell a game, and I think some exciting stuff is being done with interactive dialogue in games like Firewatch and Oxenfree. All I really want to say about this is that in the Etherlight, when we tried adding voices to NPCs, I wasn't convinced it would be worth the considerable effort involved. Um, but it turned out that even in a very limited capacity, basically just greetings and question marks, as you'd expect in an MMO, MMO like WoW, um, it really did add a huge amount to the characters who were otherwise only speaking text. So will voice acting, even a limited amount of quality, add substantially to the characters and storytelling of your game? Okay, just to return to my original question and point, uh, if you care about telling stories in your game, sound is a tool that might help you to tell your tale as well. I hope that in this short talk that I've unpacked a few things that will interest you on that point, and I'll be happy to discuss further the venue if you're interested. Thanks very much. Thank you.